Hello everyone! Thank you very much for joining. Um, right now, I will be showing you a video about Ube Yema Pandesal. So for the video, I will be teaching you the step-by-step -step procedural on how to make the proper way of kneading breads, fermentation, proofing, and then baking. So I hope this video could help you in, in selling for a small business. Thank you very much! Four hundred grams of bread flour, one hundred grams of all purpose flour, eighty grams of sugar, ten grams of creme d'or, six grams of bream, the bread improver. Then we have our sweet mashed potato, 40 grams. Here we have our water, 200 grams. We're going to add to the water two eggs, two pieces of eggs. So here is our two pieces of eggs plus the ube flavor. Before we start kneading, let's do first the mise en place. So the first set will be the dry ingredients, which is the bread flour the all-purpose flour, the sugar, the creme d'or, the bream, and the sweet potato mash. And then the second set is the liquid, which is the water, the eggs, and our ube flavor aid. The third step will be our salt. And the fourth step will be the bob, the butter oil blend. So this is the process of kneading. When you said kneading, there are three reasons. The first reason is blending. The blending is where, when you blend all the dry ingredients. After blending, the second reason for kneading is hydration. The process of hydration is when you're, go, um, is when you're going to add the water or the liquid to your dry ingredients. Normally, what I do, I add 70% of liquid to my dry ingredients. The next 10%. Make sure all the flour has been absorbed. So you have to give time in kneading. Another 10%. And the remaining 10%. So here, if you notice, all my liquid ingredients has been added to the dry ingredients in the bowl. But still, there, there are flour on the sides. You can still add more water. But you have to control the hydration. This is the extra water. So give time in kneading. What you are looking for what you're looking for is the pickup stage. When you said the pickup stage, all of the flour here on the side must be absorbed. Or malines dapat yung sides ng bowl nyo. So just give time in kneading, sometimes yung water nasa ilalim ng dough. Don't worry. 
worry about the sweet potato. If you see their, their yellow part there on the dough, it's still okay. Later, mawawala yan. Just need, if there is still flour here at the sides, you can add a little bit of water, very little lang. Remember, you're looking for a pick-up stage. Yan, malapit na. A little bit speed. And quantum flour, water pa. Yan. Most of the, most of the flour has been absorbed. You just need it a little bit more to develop gluten. So the third step after hydration, the third step up after hydration is to develop gluten. So this one, if you see, this is the gluten. Hindi pa siya ganon ka strong. If the gluten is strong, yung texture ng dough nyo, it will become smoother and elastic. So here, if you notice, the texture of your dough becomes smoother. That's the time you add your salt. The function of salt here is to strengthen the gluten. So once you add the salt, mas mabilis siyang mag-form ng gluten and to make it more stronger. Just give it some time to knead until na mag-dilute mag yung salt sa dough. At the same time, it becomes elastic. So check your dough, it's a little bit smooth. And there is the gluten, you see? Pag umiikot siya, pag hinihila niya, hindi na siya napukutol. So that's the time you can add your bob. When you're adding your bob, you just add 50% muna. Then, if your fat is almost diluted, the remainder, 50%, you may add. The purpose of this one is to be evenly distributed. Increase the speed a little bit more. If you notice if your dough becomes too sticky when kneading, you just have to increase your speed. Your dough is like that, hindi siya gumagalaw, it means you have to scrape it from the bottom para umikot siya. Sometimes kasi nakastick para mag-move yung dough nyo. Make sure it's moving like that. If yung dough nakastick sa ilalim, you just sprinkle a little bit of flour sa sides. So just keep on kneading until all the fat has been absorbed by the dough. So this is the gluten. It's developed. It's really soft. See? That's the gluten. You can stretch it out. Okay. Then after this step will be the process of fermentation. So here, I have prepared the pan. You just put some water into your pan. Instead of doing some oil, just put some water and then remove the water. Remove the water. Yan. So, a little bit moist lang yung panyo. Then, you just put your dough here. So, put your dough here. You just flatten it out para meron siyang room. Huwag masyadong, when you do fermentation, huwag masyadong maliit na bowl. The long, um, the more space you have, the more the better. After two hours of fermentation. So right now, we, we will be making the ube halaya filling. 
So for the ube halaya filling, we need the fudge it yema filling, 200 grams, the easy mix creamy door, 20 grams, and the ube flavoring. For the ube halaya filling, this is the yema, 200 grams. Then you just add your creamy door, 20 grams. Then you just mix it until smooth consistency. Then the ube flavoring. So for the ube flavorade or any flavorade products, you could just add accordingly. What's nice with the ube flavorade is there's no aftertaste, even if you add more. This is the dough after two and a half hours of fermentation. So you just remove this cling wrap slowly. Slowly remove it. If it's too sticky, you could use your D scraper. Don't worry about the dough, it's a little bit sticky. And then you just get some flour, dust it on top, cover it with flour. Para it's easier to handle, but not too much, okay? Then after you do the degassing. You just press it because you want to remove the CO2 or the carbon dioxide and you want to incorporate new oxygen. That's why we do the process of the gassing. It smells like ube. So this one, after the gassing, you just um, dust some flour. What I do, I just coat it. Para it's easier. But don't move your flour too much. Yung iba kasi when, when I saw the video, ginaganong ganun nila. After you degas it, you just let it sit for a while. And then we're going to do the portioning or scaling. So when you said the portioning or scaling, put some flour sa hands nyo. When you do portioning or scaling, um, this is the time if you want to make your dough according to its size. Um, shape uh, size sorry weight weight sorry weight and then you just cut it that's how you do the portion it's either like this horizontal or vertical wag yung iba iba para hindi masyadong ma overwork yung gluten it's really soft so we're going to do 50 grams so more or less you have an eyeball so bench it Let it set. Let it sit. Sorry. Then you cut it. And that's 50 grams. Eyeball na lang. You could do the eyeball if you have. Okay. After you portion your dough, that's the time we do the rounding. So just put your flour here on, on the top and get your dough, just coat it with the flour and then you do the rounding. Let it set. Again, coat it with the flour, not too much. Then top it off, press, then round. So when you do the rounding, iniipit mo siya from here and here. Hindi lang siya iniikot. Okay? Don't add too much flour or else yung dough nyo magiging too dry. Press, then you round. Ipiti mo siya here. Then if you're familiar with one hand, then you could do both hands na. You coat it with the dough. Then you dust it off. Then you round it. This is the rounding. After the rounding, you just cover it with the cling wrap or a damp towel here on top to prevent it from drying. So this is the step of benching or immediate proofing. The purpose of benching here is to relax the gluten. Kasi kapag ginalaw mo yung dough, yung gluten mo nagiging um, para siyang goma, bumabalik siya. So you just let the dough relax for 15 to 20 minutes for the gluten to loosen out and then we'll do the makeup. 
So for the makeup, we're going to do first our crumbs. So for the crumbs, I'm using the bread crumbs, and then normally I just add a little bit of ube flavor aid. Shake it. Then you just mix it to distribute the color. What's nice with this one, if you put a little bit of the flavor aid to your breadcrumbs, it creates a more ube, a realistic ube color. Para mas maganda. Normally kasi when you bake your bread, after you bake it, nagiging brown yung bread nyo. So, hindi masyado maganda tingnan sa mata. So, if you put a little ube flavor aid on your breadcrumbs, mas maganda siyang tingnan. Kasi na maintain niya yung color ube. Then, just set this aside. Aside from ube, you could use buko pandan, you could use chocolate, if you want to make a mocha. And that's it. Then it's up to you if you want to add more ube, that's okay. This is the makeup process. So after you bench all your dough, the gluten has already been relaxed. So we're going to do the makeup. Just remove the dough. Okay. So normally in your table here, what I do is just, I dust a little bit of flour here. And then you just get your dough, coat it with the flour. Just a little bit lang. Ha, wag masyadong madami. The purpose of coating the flour here is to prevent the dough from sticking it out. But you don't want to... Um, you don't want to create too much flour kasi it will create a dry surface on top. So here, kung hindi na siya ganun ka sticky, just top it off. And then yung top part niya, invert mo. And then you just press. Like a hamburger. Wag masyadong flatten na flatten. This, this flat, that's okay already. Yan, flat mo lang. Just make sure. And then this is sour filling. The ube halaya, the ube yema filling. This is the ube yema. We put an ube flavor to make it a halaya version. And then here, we have the cheese fit at the center. Then here, you just pull. Then, dikit mo dito. Then here, pull mo lang. Dikit mo. Then yung four corners na dito, pull mo lang pataas. Para lang mag-seal sila. Ang, ang goal mo lang dito is mag-seal yung bottom mo. And then, counting round. Then, after this one, you just coat it sa breadcrumbs. Coat it with breadcrumbs. Mas maganda if yung buong pandesal, ano mo, coated with breadcrumbs para crunchy siya. Then, after this one, just put it on a tray. No need for you to grease the tray because yung breadcrumbs, it will prevent it from sticking it, sticking it out. So again, just coat it, coat your dough. You just roll it. Yan. And then yung top niya, invert mo, press. Just use the your palm here. You just press it. Just make sure you should do medicate. So it's better if you use a silicone mat or if you have a marble marble table, maganda rin, malamig din, a wooden wooden table, okay din siya. Or for me ka, okay din. Then, the filling, you just pipe the filling at the center. A little bit of filling lang because this is a bread, this is not a cake. Press. Pull. Pinch. Pull. Pinch. Then, yung four corners. Pinch. 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 That's it na. Ikot na din. Konting bilog lang para bilog pa rin siya. And then, and this one will go to your tray. One more. Pag naubos na yung flour, dust lang ng flour. Dust ta, and then ganyan lang gawin nyo. Huwag masyadong madami. You can use any type of flour, pwedeng bread flour, all-purpose flour. Kung an, normally, kung anong flour yung nilagay mo sa bread mo, yun yung gagamitin mo na flour. Pero this one, this is just a dusting flour. So, any type of flour. Then, invert. 
Then, pipe at the center. This is really good. Hindi siya masyadong matamis. You could sell it. You could make a bigger version of this one. Maganda rin. Etong dough na to, you could use the, not just ube, you could make flavor, any flavored flavorings. Like the buko pandan, masarap din siya. The mocha, okay then. The chocolates, okay then. If you want to make a plain pandesal, lagyan mo siya ng konting vanilla flavored para mabango. This one. Coat it again. Yeah, this one. I sorry. Invert, then press. See, it's easy kapag yung dough mo properly bench, na relax na yung gluten, susunod siya sa yung. Don't put too much. Press. Pull. Four corners. Yan. Basta ang goal lang dito is you pinch. Another reason pa, you don't want to have too much flour. Kasi when you do the pinching, kapag maraming flour, hindi siya didikit. So, as much as possible, nakita nyo, hindi siya dumidikit, pero medyo moist siya. So, maganda pa rin yung likod niya. Then, ikot mo lang siya. Round it a little bit. Very light lang. Then, you dip it sa breadcrumbs. Then, this is our pandesal. Ready to proof na siya. Okay? So, you just put it on a tray without any grease. That's okay. You just put at least 2 inch apart. Kasi this, the next stage will be the proofing. When you said the proofing stage, hahayaan mo mag-double yung volume niya. Hanggang mag-double na yung volume niya, then you bake it. So, this is our ube pandesal. It's rising already. We're going to check if it's proof already, if it's ready to bake. So, you just press it here. And then, if it's, it bounces back a little bit. And then, may naiwan na mark here. It means it's ready na. So, one more. Don't press it too hard. Just very light lang. Ayan. This one, nag bounce back na siya. It's ready na. Meaning, it's ready. So, you could start baking this at 150 to 180 degrees Celsius for 15, 13 to 15 minutes.